It's the quintessential fern. Let's talk about Nephrolepis. What's up fellow plant enthusiasts? My name is Dylan and this is Baines Botanicals. Today we're going to be talking about Nephrolepis. Let's pause for a second to consider how cool that name is. Um, Nephrolepis, like I said, is the embodiment of what people picture when we think of ferns. Because Nephrolepis also contains the Boston fern, uh, which many people display on their porches and they get gigantic and they're just a very common spring and summer plant for outdoors. And there are a lot of different nephrolepises, nephrolepices <laughs> that uh, are good house plants. But because they're ferns, they're not the easiest plants to take care of. But before we get to that, here is the taxonomy information for nephrolepis. And as you notice, we are not in the phylum magnoliophyta. We are in polypodiophyta, uh, which is where all of the ferns are. Specifically, we are in the family nephrolepidaceae. Uh, also, a really cool name, Nephrolepidaceae. So uh, yes, as I said, this is Nephrolepis exultata, uh, which is really a bunch of different variations of the same species. Uh, this particular one is called a jester's crown fern. Uh, like I said, it is Nephrolepis exultata, but this is different from a Boston fern. Uh, or a Kimberly Queen fern, which are also uh, Nephrolepis exultata, but they're just different. This one has, let's see if we can get it a little bit closer without it getting crazy. This one has fronds that are hardier, like they're thicker. Can you, can you kind of hear that? Just that sound that they're making of like kind of crunchy, not in a bad way, but like kind of crunchy leaves just rubbing together because they're not really delicate like, um, like a Boston fern is, or if you want to get extreme, like a maidenhair fern, adiantum. Um, but it's just, this is the only Nephrolepis I've had luck with indoors. I'm so pleased with it because I, it came into work and I was keeping an eye on it for probably hmm, two or three weeks of just average uh, big box store watering and I noticed that it wasn't dying. It wasn't browning, it wasn't yellowing, it wasn't doing anything stupid. It was just being green and doing fine. So I bought it because I'm like, well, clearly this can, this can work, I can do this. And it's, it's been great. It's survived um, the winter so far. I can hear a little bit of like dry leaves on the inside, but that's not unusual to have a little bit of like, um, leaf drop and dryness inside, like the central part of the fern. But uh, yeah, I love it. I love, I love the um, kind of the, they're not really aerial roots per se, but, and of course you have the classic fiddlehead, uh, the unfurling of a new frond. Uh, the root systems of ferns, I did actually pull out a few, a few crunchy pieces, but, the, uh, the root systems of ferns are not typical roots. They are actually a rhizome, which is kind of a horizontal root system. Um, because of that, if you were going to propagate a nephrolepis, you could do so by division, just splitting that rhizome up and planting, maybe not one this big, I mean, you could, but, uh, and planting it in you know separate pots and you have a new plant. Let's get into the care. So as far as light goes, this is going to be medium light. You could probably do low light too, honestly, because ferns grow in the understory of the forest. Uh, they get dappled light. They don't really get, they really don't get bright, direct light. Um, bright, direct light would, you know, burn this plant. You can do bright light if it's like a grow light. Um, although I don't even have this under a grow light. I have it sitting on my kitchen counter. So it just gets like splash light from the windows and like the lights and things. So uh, yeah, medium light, medium, low to medium. Yeah. As far as watering goes, uh, it needs to be kept consistently moist. There's that word. Uh, you, you don't want the soil to dry out ever. Uh, I've got it in, pl I, 
<clears throat> I've got it in a plastic pot to keep it from drying out too much. Uh, ferns are not good candidates for terracotta pots because terracotta wicks the moisture away from the soil, uh, which is a lot better for things like succulents. I do have some of my tropicals in terracotta pots, but ferns are better in like ceramic or plastic. Uh, the soil itself, did we finish watering? No, just keep it consistently moist, not sopping wet, but um, it always you always wanna make sure that it is, the soil is the consistency of when you touch it and it kind of has, it's kind of sticks to your finger a little bit. Uh, if it starts to get dusty, you, you've probably let it dry out a little bit too much and you don't want it to get like that light brown color. Does that make sense? Like when soil's wet and it's that nice kind of rich, blacker, dark brown color, that, that's what you want consistently. Um, yeah. That's part of the reason ferns are tricky, just from, from the watering perspective. Uh, as far as soil goes, just a regular houseplant soil is fine. Uh, the humidity is the other half of why ferns are difficult, because you do need humidity. I've got this sitting next to a humidifier, but like I said, even in a big box store, it was doing fine and there were no humidifiers there. So this particular one is pretty hardy, but there are other species of Nephrolepis or different versions of Nephrolepis exultata that are not as hardy. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried to grow a Boston fern indoors, but it doesn't really work. It can under the right conditions, I suppose, as anything, but it just generally doesn't work. Humidity, oh, fertilizer. Uh, you can fertilize, just be careful. Ferns can be kind of sensitive to over fertilization, so kind of err on the side of caution. Uh, I do fertilize bi-weekly during the growing season and not at all during the dormant season from late fall, uh, winter, early spring. I don't think they make fern-specific fertilizers. They probably do. I guess there's a fertilizer for everything, but uh, just, just be careful. Another thing about ferns, it's good to kind of rinse them off every now and then just, you know, to kind of keep the pest pressures off and uh, just kind of give them that extra humidity. If you do get some pest pressures, be careful of the insecticide that you use because the fronds can be very sensitive to certain insecticides. So if you need to treat it, uh, do a little test spot first, like pick a frond that's kind of not obvious and see how it reacts because you don't want to burn the foliage. Uh, that's, that's important. I think that's all I have about Nephrolepis. This video ran a little bit long, but hey, it's like the queen of all ferns. Kimberly Queen Fern, maybe that's why they call it that. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing, and thank you so much for your comments. Let me know what your experience is with Nephrolepis. Um, let me know if there are any specific cultivars or anything that are hardy or ones that are kind of garbage because they just don't do well. Uh, and yeah, until the next video, I will see you guys very soon. Thank you.